welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So, first off, just for a little quick introduction, I enjoy buying and building models of the different, different mech and giant robots that are featured in in the Mobile Suit Gundam series. And this right here, this one right here in particular, is the Goof Custom, piloted by the Xeon pilot Norris Packard from Mobile Suit Gundam, the 8th MS team. And so today we're just, just going to be doing a little video review of this particular kit. This is just a regular old high-grade kit, which is one of the more basic kits that you can buy. And he is currently residing in Mecha Hangar 18, a little diorama I put together with uh, both Nerve and Anaheim Electronics logos just plastered on there. And it's got a little runway for fighter, for little fighters, a little utility pallet, weapons rack, a little loading dock and loading platform for the mobile suits. So. Yeah, let's let's get right into the review, shall we? Now, first thing I just kind of want to talk about real quick is the aesthetics. So, this is a Xeon mobile suit, so it, it's obviously got the Xeon, the tra tra traditional Xeon designs uh, on there, and as you can see here, you got. Right here, I'm pointing at this with a toothpick, you got a little metallic sticker in there. That's supposed to be the eye, and you can actually like take the head off and move the eye around. That's really nice. It's got a little, uh, not sure if you guys can see, a little clear window in here for like a, the pilot to look out of over on the, the torso. And it's got some very nice light blues and some dark blues up there it's a lot of blue it just, it just goes really well with each other and of course we got same thing kind of going on over here with the with this big old minigun shield combo with a big old broadsword <laughs> holstered into it that is that minigun shield is pretty much why I bought this and in fact this is actually the very first kit that I ever bought so yeah, so this uh, has a bit of significance to it, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for aesthetics. Now let's move on to the accessories. Okay, and right here we got the accessories, and uh, it's got a good number of accessories, but like, also not that much. Like, the first thing we got over here is, um, yeah, actually I, I almost couldn't fit this up on the weapon rack. We got the, uh, the minigun shield. But you just got this giant Gatling gun. Like, what was it? A six barreled Gatling gun attached to the shield. Got a little ammo belt going down there. Actually, I'm looking at this thing and it kind of reminds me of like the those guns they put on the A10 Warthogs. You know, the things are just, they just fire so fast that you literally just hear it. Actually, you see it before you hear it. That's how fast it fired. Oh, that's uh, coming loose over there on the bag. You gotta watch out for that. So there's that. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna put this off to the side. I'm not even gonna put it attack on there. And we've also got the uh, the broadsword right here. You got a giant broadsword. I I think he mostly just holds it with one hand, but you, you might be able to get two hands on here if you're lucky. I don't know, I haven't tried that yet, but, uh, and we're mo moving on, and, uh, also we have this, uh, it's like a grappling hook, but in, like, the anime, they, they, like, shoot this at one of the mobile shoots, and it, like, puts out, like, a little EMP effect and just, like, disables it, or, or it disables, like, maybe one arm on the EZ-8, so, and this thing actually connects into one of the arms, I'm just gonna get this guy. There's a little notch right there. Let me let me see if I can pop this out. And I 
just popped out the hand, but this little notch pops out of the wrist like so, and you can take the wire, stick it on in there, and one of the hands is a little open express, expressive hand, and you can stick it, I'm doing this off camera, you stick it on in there, and make him shoot him out, like that, like he's Spider-Man. That is, that is actually a very stable wire right there, just looking at that. And I'm, I'm going to leave that in there for the rest of this segment. But uh, on the other hand, he just has this little, really ugly tab right there, which uh, that little tab is used to put this thing on. It's a triple barrel machine gun. Kind of looks like the Ripper from Duke Nukem 3D that, uh, with, the, with the triple barrels on it. And that has a little tab in there. It's supposed to just connect it onto there. And you can shoot it like that. So. And that's also where the. There's a hole in the top where this thing connects onto it. But I gotta actually disconnect the hand. Do something first. And. The hands, in order to put like accessories in it, you just like pop out the fingers. This is. You pop out the fingers like that. And. You put it onto there like so. That skin is very, very, very clean, very, very strong. And you just stick that onto there and there's the hand and you just kind of slide that on in you know what I might actually have to remove this move the triple barrel gun first in order to just slide that into there first I'm sorry if my fingers are obstructing the view here. I'm just trying to get this right and that goes into there and you can just kind of wiggle that uh, oh I got it got it I got it there you can just connect all of that onto there and he's got one seriously wicked looking weapon right there and the broadsword goes into the shield like so and so yeah he can just shoot it out like that and he actually does a really good job at holding that up surprisingly for something that big and heavy that is impressive and uh, also the other two accessories yeah he's got a ooh, closed fist and another closed fist. It has two closed fists, one for the left and one for the right, and uh, an open fist for the for the right. So, yep, that is that is him with all the accessories that he comes with. And then now we're just going to move on to articulation now. And now we are on to the articulation and the build. And the build quality is very good for this and for articulation you got the the head which can turn around like so and if you remove the head then you got this little tab on the bottom right here I'm not gonna move it but there's this tab right here where you can move the eye left and right so that, that's a very nice touch. I'm gonna put the head back on him now. And so like that. And the uh, shoulder armor can actually kind of move around like that. Which is ni nice if you want to get him doing something like this. So you can move his arm up like that. Also move it forward and back like that. And also
also bring the arm up to kind of like a almost 90 degrees and the uh, hand can just rotate around and around like that and the arm can also spin like that. I don't think I've ever actually moved it this much. So. And the other arm can pretty much do the same thing but I expect it to be somewhat limited because of the actually not really minigun arm doesn't do much in terms of articulation and whatnot and uh, the leg kind of limited to forward and back due to the skirt due to the really stiff skirt armor on there but for the leg like I can just do the knee bend really good that was a really good knee bend right there and also the the foot can kind of do a little something like that and like again the same thing on the other side so that I don't think I've ever actually moved this around like that much so I would say the articulation is actually very good on this yeah and now we're we're gonna move on to something a little extra now nah, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a goof custom that I that that I bought and fully customized myself. I used a airbrush just to spray paint all the parts different colors, and I used the the head crit, and I used some uh, little decals from other leftover kits that I had, and I also modified the triple barreled gun so it's just a double barrel shotgun right there and I took the shield and I, I made a custom rig on here let me get this turned around I made a custom rig where I can position the shield up on the shoulder and I, I use a, a shoulder pad from a Zaku kit and, and also the let me turn this around the head crest on here is from another kit that was from the Unicorn, Unicorn Gundam Fenix, and I gave it a different colored eye sticker. This is just a little gray, little green eye sticker right there. And this is a little custom thing. I bought this to do a do a to do a sort of like a kit bashing experiment. For those that aren't in the know, kit bashing is when you take two different kits and you combine them together to make some abomination. And uh, yeah, that that didn't work, so I just built this instead. And uh, in terms of accessories, it's pretty much got most of the same accessories. It doesn't have the the cable, and although I did customize the sword, the broadsword on here with a silver blade and a gold handle, so that that this actually came out quite nice. For this, I just used. Uh, some sharpies on oh, there, some silver and gold sharpies, and I also took one of the okay for for the joints. They're held together by these little rubber things called poly caps, and for this, this is to it, it, in place of this big gun. If you take the gun off, there's that tab. I I just covered up the tab with this poly cap that I custom made into a into just a regular like camera so that that's to go in, in, in place of the triple barrel gun and for the hands I just I just spray painted the I just airbrushed the backs of them nothing really special on that and fun, fun, fun fact the the lime green on here was actually was actually a yellow I was I don't know why it turned lime green it, it was it was yellow on the paper but then I spray painted it on the model, and it was lime green. I I think I think the the paint and the plastic on there just did did something. I don't know, but I think it it, look, it looked way better than yellow. And also, just a quick heads up, I just I did do a little bit of detailing and panel lining on this just to make it look nice. I, I meant to say that earlier, but I, I forgot to. 
there for for panel lining i just did uh i just used a regular set of sharpies nothing special and they're dirt cheap so th there is yep there is the, the regular goof custom now there's the custom built goof custom i haven't decided on what i'm going to name this I, oh i think i probably will name it like the the goof uh acidic or sulfuric or something because of the green color or something like that and I was actually thinking of just giving this like a sniper rifle something like that or, or a grenade launcher or something just a little extra weapon part or something like that so uh that's it for the for the custom build segment now let's go on to the the final verdict and a little introduction to my ranking system now here's a quick look at the ranking system. So I rank these kits on a scale of 0 to 100. And for, for, and for, each, and for each rank they're going to get a special award. So let's start off with the lowest one. Over here, this little silver thing over here, this is tin can tier. This is anything between 0 and 59 out of a hundred. This is like the lowest of the low. Don't want anything around here. And so far nothing that I have built has ever made it here to this tier. And next tier, yeah that was 0 to 59. Now this 60 to 69 is participation ribbon. Which means uh, they tried to do something good but it just didn't really work out that well. And there is only one kit in my entire collection that I can think of that would qualify for participation ribbon. Yeah, I'm looking at you, SD Dionway Master Gundam, right here. Uh, I, I, I don't really like this thing all that much. And yeah, I just knocked him over and I don't care. <laughs> and up next, 70 to 79 is bronze. This is when things are starting to get good. Bronze is not it is good, but it's like could be better. Bronze is good though. It's this silver tier, which is eighty to eighty nine, silver tier is really good. Like I mean, it's kind of kind of average, but like these are are are, are really good. In this area and then there's 90 to 99 is gold these are these are really good ones I think in gold those are phenomenal kits right there but then at one perfect 100 is this right here this is master emerald tier yeah, I, 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 I do love me some Sonic. Yep, Master Emerald Tier. That is the best of the best perfect 100. Right there. So, out of all of these, what does the Goof Custom get? Uh, drum roll pre please. Uh, da, da, and... It is Silver Tier. Yes, the Goof Custom gets Silver Tier at 89 out of 100. So, yep, you heard it from me first. This is good. 89 out of 100, that is good. You should probably pick this up when you get the chance. If, if you like the Goof Custom, this is a good one to get. Or if you're just looking for something to start, to start collecting, this is also a good one to get. So, uh... Yep, that is it for the review. 89 out of 100. I've said that three times already, but it's pretty good. So, yep, this is the first of many kit reviews that I plan on doing. Uh, prob probably going to do the classic RX-78 up next. Or maybe the Maser, because that's fresh in my head. But, uh... Anyway, stay tuned for more videos.
not only pertaining to the kits but to other stuff as well I'm probably thinking about get getting the second video going up today if I if I have the time maybe tomorrow I don't know but uh anyway see you later see you later peace out